Seven nothing. The Diamondbacks have a lead over the Padres. We head to the top half of the third inning. It's great to have with us Rob Manfred, the Commissioner of Major League Baseball. And uh, Rob, it is a toasty in these parts right now. It is. It's warm. I uh, came from New York where we have barely broken 60. It was quite a shock <laughs> this morning. Uh, it was pretty warm. Well, right now things are going great for Major League Baseball, it appears. And I know one of the huge initiatives that you're really interested in this year is bringing kids into the game more so across the country and it seems like it's working right now. Well we've worked very hard at our youth initiative. We've actually invested in youth programs. We've made some great partnerships. Cal Ripken baseball Little League. I can't say enough about Steve Keener the president of Little League really great partner for us. And you know the industry uh, association that reports on participation just came out with its numbers this year. Uh, baseball and softball were up 7.7% and 8% respectively. Baseball, once again, is the most played sport by kids under age 18. We haven't been that in over a decade. So we're, we really feel like some of the programs we've been working on um, are starting to have some traction. Uh, the play ball initiative, we just had play ball weekend this past weekend. Play ball initiative has been a really good thing for the game. You think about it too, and how much are you asking the players to get involved too? Because that, that participation to me is so essential. I'll tell you a great player story. Uh, players a huge asset in terms of encouraging kids to play. The MLB PA has stepped up. Um, we created a $30 million joint fund with the MLB PA out of some of the money generated under the basic agreement. It's used for all sorts of youth programs. We've helped clubs build academies where kids can go and play in inner cities. Um, all sorts of projects, all directed at kids. But individual players, unbelievably committed to this project. I was yesterday morning down at Seton Hall Prep in New Jersey, uh, Rick Porcello, donated out of his own funds, nothing to do with the union, the most beautiful turf field, major league quality dugouts, and a locker room wow. uh, to the high school where he played. And that's just one, I mean, Rick's a great guy, but you know what? We have 1,200 great guys yeah. that are major league players. And this topic, they're really interested in because they care about the game and they want to make sure the game continues to be as great as it is today. Now one of the things certainly that has been talked a lot is pace of play. Uh, how do you feel that's going this year and how much more do you think will happen? Well, um, I, I can't say that I'm pleased with our pace of play this year. <laughs> um, I would be less than candid if I said that, so I'm going to avoid saying it. Uh, look, we slipped back a little bit this year. Um, you know, our game time's up. Uh, I don't think our pace, e even putting game time to one side, has been good. I think that uh, over the course of the summer, we're going to have some continuing dialogue with the union, but I think we need to get focused on dead time in the game, um, mound visits. Um, we're prepared to look at our commercial load in terms of mm -hmm. inning breaks. Um, I, I think that getting pitchers to deliver pitches more promptly is really important, getting batters to stay in the box. All those little dent item items are, are important. And replay. We, uh, we've done better on replay this mm -hmm. year. The 30 second limit on the manager challenge and the two minute kind of cutoff in the replay room are improvements. But we need to continue to look at replay uh, as well. You think about this whole week for baseball. And Edison Volk has no hitter. Albert Pujols, 600 home runs. And tonight, Scooter Jeanette, four home runs. It's unbelievable. You know, the, the, the greatest thing about our game, and I, I actually said this the other day, is, you know, every single day, our players do something special. And you never know what the heck it's going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, who, who thought Volquez was going to throw a no-hitter? I didn't, you know, <laughs> but it happened. You know, the Pujols thing obviously took a long time to get to where he was, and you sort of knew it was going to happen at some point. Um, but, you know, you have a player like the one tonight, a lot of people don't not familiar yeah. with him just shows you how many great athletes we have in the game. Well, always things going on in Major League Baseball. You got the draft coming up, which is always huge and fun for everybody. But I want to ask you a little bit about any expansion possibilities. That's something that's on the forefront. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, when I think about expansion, there's two really fundamental points. One, I believe baseball is a growth business, and growth businesses expand. So at some point we are going to expand. Second thing, in terms of schedule format, um, I, I'm not familiar with every detail of how the schedule may, but I do know this. Sixes, 
and even numbers work better than fives. Mm -hmm. And we got fives right now. Uh, so I, I think getting to 32 would really help us. Um, and, you know, I think it should be a longer term goal for baseball. Summer Classic was a huge success in San Diego last year, this year in Miami. All of the young talent in the game, I think, is very exciting. Even the shortstops, which I think is a good thing with baseball. In general, talking about talking about the All-Star game and how, how excited you are for it to be in Miami. Look, I think we're going to set another record in terms of how young our All-Stars are going to be this year. And it, it's just testimony to the fact that we have an amazing generation of players that have come into the game a, at the same time. And there's some great storylines surrounding. You mentioned Lindor and Correa. You know, 10 years ago, everybody was saying, oh, gee, we're not getting any great players from Puerto Rico. Oh, gee, we solved that problem, <laughs> yes, didn't we? Did. Um, you know, they went to the finals of the WBC, and you got these two great shortstops. Um, but I, I think that the All-Star Game is a real opportunity for us to market our players, mm -hmm. make people around the country familiar with players who may play in Cleveland, may play in Houston. They don't get maybe the exposure that you get in New York, but make people understand that this generation really is special, this group of players. I want to ask you about Mexico City because last year, uh, of course, the Padres were there in Mexico right. City at the end of spring training. Did I you, was there. You were there as well. <laughs> I know. I remember seeing you there. Uh, I mean, is that something you can see as a possibility expansion? I do see it as a possibility. I find Mexico to be intriguing um, a, a, as an opportunity. Um, I, I think that it could help us not only in terms of the internationalization of the game, but help us with the Hispanic market here in the U.S. Commissioner, thanks so much for coming on. Really, Great thank you very much. Appreciate really it. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.